Hello, my sweet friends, and welcome to Kinda Shabby. My name is Becky, and I am so glad you stopped by. Today's video is a nature-inspired collaboration hosted by Michelle at Moxie DIY and Java. I've got that playlist linked in the description box below, so please be sure to say hello to all of these other ladies and check out their nature-inspired crafts as well. Well, I've got lots of fun in store for us today, so let's get these projects started. So for my tiered tray, I want to have some little flowers to tuck in here and there between the things I'm going to actually be styling on it. And we're going to be making several different types of felt flowers. And this is the first style that we're going to be making. And look just how cute and adorable that is. And for my stem, I like to save these and after I've used the flowers off of them, these come in handy to use in projects just like this. You can always use florist wire or you could also use some bamboo skewers as well. Our flower here on the petals itself is actually two different steps. The first one is going to be a circle and I took the center of my four inch little embroidery hoop here and I'm gonna place that down and trace it. And I'm also going to cut right inside there. I don't want those marks to show. And then once we have our circle, we want to cut a spiral shape. And you can actually draw a spiral shape on there if you like, but I just find it easy enough just to start cutting it, leaving about a half inch all the way around. So then after we cut it, it's going to look something like that. And this right here looks a little funky to me, so I'm just going to kind of round that off. And then for the second portion, I want to make little oval shapes. This is about a two by two and a half inch oval. And I'm going to cut it so my pencil lines don't show. So we've just got like a little oblong looking oval shape. And I'm going to go ahead and cut out five of these. I have cut another strip of felt that is a half inch wide and three inches long. And I'm going to take and fold that and glue that together. And you just need a little dot. And then I'm going to twist it and then fold it in half and roll it up on itself. So I've got these ends here and I'm just going to glue that to itself. So I just get that nice little shape right there. Then I can pop some glue in that space and insert my stem. That way I'm gluing the center of my flower to my floral stem. And now we're going to start with the center of our spiral here. And you're going to lay it in like that and glue that down. And now you can roll that around. And as you're rolling it, Every now and then, just add a little bit of glue to secure that into place. So just continue rolling and gluing all the way to the end of your spiral. So once we're finished with that step, that's what we have. And if you want to stop at that, that's perfectly fine because that is just as cute as that can be. But I want to continue adding some of these little floral petals as well. And on one of the long ends here, you just want to make a couple of snips. So I've just made three snips there. I'm going to take the two in the middle, kind of overlap those to glue that. And then you're going to overlap this on this end. And it literally just takes a teeny tiny little dot of glue there. And then you're going to take this end, just slightly overlap it and glue it down like that. So that way your little petals have a cupped appearance to them. So I'm going to snip the edges and glue the remaining of my petals here. And now we're going to take our little petals here and we're going to start placing them and gluing them just like this around the perimeter. And now we're going to take another petal and we're going to slightly overlap those like this and we're going to glue that one into place as well. Overlap that 
glue that one into place. I'm just going to kind of squish all of that up just to make sure all of those petals are nice and secure on there. And then you can see I've got a little bit of an opening here. So I'm going to place my next petal right there. And then my last petal I'm going to place in there just like that. And now we're going to finish off the bottom of our flower here, just like I did on this one. And then we're going to make some leaves. I just start with a plain circle of the felt that I know is going to be large enough to cover that up. Just make a couple of snips in there. So we've got just snips there in the fabric. And then I just take my scissors and round off those corners. And you can see there is nothing perfect or technical about that. They're not even the same size lobes, and that's okay. And very carefully poke to make a hole in the middle and just thread that on to my flower. And then we're just going to apply a little bit of hot glue here and there, and we're just going to tack all of that down. And now for your leaves, you can do something very simple like just a teardrop shape. And this is the leaf that we'll be using on the next flower that we're going to make. But for this one here, I start with kind of a tall triangle shape. And then from there, I round off the top of that, make a snip kind of round into that so we get that shape there and then I'm going to snip into that so I cut some of that excess fabric off so this leaf stands away from that a little bit more and come over here and do the same thing and snip away some of that excess fabric then I fold it in half I'm going to make sure your other leaf is out of the way we're going to round those edges off and then we're going to come down and cut kind of like a heart shape, but don't go all the way to the middle because you don't want to cut that piece off. So we've got those. With this section here, we're going to come back and do the same thing. We're going to snip away some of that excess fabric. So that starts to stand out a little bit more. And no two of these are going to look alike. They're all going to look different every time you do them. Then I'm going to do the same thing. You're going to fold it in half. Make sure your other leaves are out of the way. Round those off. Cut down kind of like a little heart shape toward the center. So then we have our next leaves and we can come back and round that off a little bit more. And again, we're going to cut in and cut some of this excess fabric away. And one more time folding it in half and then this time as we round those off we're just going to come close to this edge right here and we're going to round that off as well so that's what we're left with cut that down a little bit and that's it that's how i make those little leaves and now i have a set of two and i like kind of place mine like this figure out where i want it and I think that looks cute. So then I'm just going to glue those into place. And I always use something to kind of tack that down when I'm working with thin fabric because you definitely don't want to burn yourself. And then that's all there is to it. Isn't that adorable? These are going to look really, really cute on my tiered tray as well. And then this is the other flower that we're going to be making today. And I think these are just so adorable. So for the center, I just cut off a section here of my felt. And this is a two inch section here. And you're gonna fold it in half and you're going to glue it very close to the edge all the way down. And that's going to form a little tube here. And I like to work in sections. And then you take your scissors and you're going to make little snips, but you're not going to go all the way through. You don't want to cut your glue line. And I like to do mine pretty close together. So it looks like this. And I'm just going to make those little snips all the way down my little felt tube here. And now that I've made the little snips all the way down my tube here, I'm going to start rolling this over. 
and that's going to form the center. Glue a little bit and roll that down. And then as you roll, you want to make sure you keep this nice and flat. And so you're just going to keep rolling and gluing all the way down the length of your tube. And now I'm going to add my stem by finding the middle and just squirting a little bit of glue in there, inserting my stem, and I'm just going to squeeze that to make sure that that glue sets up. And now we're going to make our petals. And so I'm going to make four this size and then five a larger size. Two and a half by two for the smaller one, three by two and a half for the larger one. And now that we have our small and large petals cut out, we're going to shape those as well. And for the top of mine, just cut some little waves in there. It doesn't have to be anything special. And then I'm going to make a snip on one side and a snip on the other like this. Run glue along the bottom of the middle section there and then fold these over. So again, we've got another cupped shape just like that. And for the larger petals, we're going to do the same thing. Just cut some kind of little wavy design at the top and then cut two slits at the bottom. Apply a little bit of glue to the center and bring the other two edges over to cup it just like that. So I'm going to prepare the rest of my little petals here and then we'll come back and start getting our flower together. And we're going to place them like that. Add my glue and then place that down. And then we take another petal and slightly overlap that. And then come back here and glue that down. And then you'll do the same thing with your two smaller remaining petals. You'll be placing those in and gluing those down. And then that's going to be the start of your flower. Just how cute is that? And to add your larger petals, you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to stagger those between those other petals and glue those to your base. Overlap and add another petal and glue that down. And then you'll just add your remaining petals in the same fashion. And these just turn out so, so very cute. I want to add my leaves first to this one. That way all of that gets covered up with my circle. So I like that placement there. And then I'm going to make my snips round off those edges. Poke my hole in the center. Thread it onto my stem. And then I can glue it down. And I just love how these turn out. They're just so, so cute. And I just love that you can make them in any color, any style that you like to match your decor. So let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, we are going to combine some wood beads and Iron Orchid Designs transfer and one of these hang tags to create a beautiful decor piece for our tiered tray. I've already painted my beads and I use the color Vintage Victorian and it is just such a nice beautiful soft pink. And I am going to be painting my hang tag in that same color. I'm going to go ahead and remove this beautiful bow just so I don't get any paint on it. So I painted both sides of my tag with two coats of our paint. And then once all of this thoroughly dried, I took it outside and sprayed it with some flat acrylic sealer just to make sure that all of my paint was going to be protected before I started to add my transfer on top. And now I'm going to be using one of the transfers from this gorgeous book ephemeral melange and it's one of my absolute favorites. It just has all of these gorgeous roses, all kinds of beautiful little floral motifs, but it also has some smaller things in here as well. And so the one that I have chosen is this little cutie right here that has the little seed packet on there. And so what says nature better than some beautiful growing flowers? 
First, I'm going to cut out the transfer that I want to apply to my tag. And your transfer actually consists of three separate pieces. You have your backer paper, you have your front clear gridded carrier sheet, and then attached to that grid is your actual design. So you want to take a second just to line up your design where you want it. And I'm going to take some blue painter's tape and put it across the top here. And then I can lift that up and remove my backer paper. And when you get your transfer book, it comes with this plastic transfer tool. And you take your transfer tool and you start rubbing that down to transfer that to the surface below. And that's what we have so far. And I just keep rubbing and pulling back on my gridded carrier sheet. Now you're going to take your carrier sheet and you're just going to gently rub over that. It's called burnishing. Just to make sure your design is really rubbed into that surface. I just love that. That is so pretty. And now I want to put my little beaded garland together. And I thought that this twine was just the perfect color just to bring that color out from my little seed packet transfer here. And I like to cut off more than I need for the length of my beads. And I'm going to string this to the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and string all my beads on here. So now with all my beads on there, I'm going to tie multiple knots here at the end. And that looks good right there and that's not going to come off. I want to create a little tassel for this end. So I'm taking this small notebook that has a sturdy back and I'm going to start wrapping my twine around there. And I'll probably wrap this, I don't know, 30 to 40 times while I'm making those loops there. And I did wrap that around 40 times. I thought that's going to be a nice little chunky tassel for me there. And now I'm going to take another piece and just work that in up at the top and tie that tightly in a knot. And now I can slide this off and then we can cut these loops down at the bottom. And then I'm going to get another piece and I'm going to come and tie that down just like that. It's been on that roll for a while, so that's why it just won't lie flat. So I've got a little bit of water here, an old rag, and also some of my downy wrinkle release that's going to help us get a better look. So first I'm just going to dip it in the water and squeeze out the excess, put it on my rag, and then I'm just going to give a couple of squirts of my wrinkle release and I'm going to work that in. And now that it's lying flat, you can see I need to give it a little haircut to straighten that out. But I'm going to let this dry for just a little bit before I cut it, just to make sure that it's not going to shrink up a little more. So we're going to set this aside, let that dry for a little bit, and then we'll come and get our tassel attached to our little wood tag here. So while our tassel is drying, I'm going to come back over my little tag here with a little bit of my dark wax just to add a little bit of a vintage aged look to that. And just kind of wipe that on. Even getting a little bit of it on my transfer. And then wiping that in with my paper towel. I think that the pink is just a little too bright. And just adding that wax on there just tones everything down and then blends this into the background a little better as well. And I do it in small sections so it doesn't start to dry before I wipe it off. And I just like it looking a little more vintage. So I'm going to go ahead and do the dark wax on the front and the back of my tag. And I'm going to do it on my beads as well. And now we can come back and finish off our tassel. Now I just tied a little knot here and I want to send those ends up this way. And then I'm going to take some more twine and I'm going to make a loop 
toward the bottom of my tassels here and I'm going to leave that long length at the top and I want to start wrapping this just a couple of times around. That's going to add a little bit more definition to the little head of our tassel here. Now I'm going to take that end and slip it through that loop and now I'm going to come back and pull that loop up through the top and now I can clip all of these excess threads off. Don't want to cut it too close. When I cut all of that off it kind of hides those knots and now that this is dry I can give this a little haircut. Now on this end here I'm going to slip it through the top and tie that on. Come through that with some tweezers. Catch those threads in there and just pull them in. That way those ends are all inside the little head of our tassel there and it just looks so much neater. Now the last thing I need to do is add my pretty little ribbon back. Just tie a little shoestring bow like you would do if you were tying your shoes. And that is just so sweet. I love that. And I think these colors coordinate and everything just looks so sweet. And that is going to be so pretty on my tiered tray. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For our next project, we're going to be doing a little floral arrangement in this cute little Yankee Candle votive holder that I picked up from a thrift store. A pill bottle would work just fine. You can see that they're almost the same size. And so you could put something in a pill bottle that would look cute on your tiered tray as well. First, I'm going to start by cutting off some of this floral foam to place in my vase as a base for all of our flowers. And you can see I've got that all nice and squished down in there for us to be able to stick our flowers in there. Next, I'm going to be using some Spanish moss. So I'm just going to really load up that foam. And then very carefully start placing in my moss. And then I can just come back and trim up any of that little excess there. When I do my florals, you know I like to do some drapey pieces along the outside perimeter first. Well, this is a little too long to be draping all across there like that. So I'm just going to cut a couple of these pieces and we'll start getting them placed in along the perimeter. And if I have to glue down any pieces, I will. But since we've got our floral foam in there, it should hold everything in there quite nicely. So now I have nice perimeter interest all the way around my little urn. And then this little bunch came from Hobby Lobby in the bridal section. And I'm just going to pop this down straight into the middle and then we'll come back and add in some extra to fill in where we need it. So then I have these little green leaves and I'm going to just go around tucking them in to fill in and cover up where you can see all of this area right in here. And I'm gluing it to the moss and not to the flowers because everything here can just be pulled out and reused in later projects. So now I've got all my little leaves tucked in there and that helps to cover up some of those little wires. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just snip off some of these little white berries and tuck them in to fill in some spots as well. So I think right in there looks good. And I'm just going to hold it up until the glue sets. And that's starting to add some pretty little interest already. So that's all I'm going to do. Just take the rest of these little berries and cut them up and just tuck them into the rest of our floral arrangement here. And there we go. I think our little topiary turned out really, really cute. So it doesn't take a whole lot to put together something that is going to look really, really cute on my tiered tray. Well, let's go ahead and move on to our next project. For my last project, I was planning on doing this cute little cross stitch project with you, 
but I have simply run out of time. So I'm just going to take all of our completed projects here and style them up on my tiered tray so you can see how cute all of this week's projects turned out. Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been my pleasure to craft with you. Let me know in the comments if you plan on making any of these beautiful felt flowers, and if so, what colors are you going to use? Please visit the playlist that I have linked for you below so you can see all of the other nature-inspired crafty creations awaiting you from the other gals in this collaboration. Please remember to subscribe for more kinda shabby but always chic crafty inspirations. And until next time, my sweet friends, be blessed.